Hello, YouTube. In today's video, we're going to take a look at an Intel NUC. This is one that I got basically new in box, but it, there was something supposedly wrong with it, or there was some stuff absent, whatever. Uh, not exactly important to me. Just for reference, this is the NUC 6 uh, CAY, which means it is a Celeron CPU based NUC. It is, of course, an ultra compact form factor desktop PC. And uh, these things are quite ideal to run as a little dedicated server or stuff like that. But for that you'd have to get the uh, more high-end units. These are also available with i3, i5 and i7 CPUs. And uh, the later models you can actually upgrade to 32 gigs of RAM. And uh, fit in a couple of M2 SSDs. Which can make these things uh, hella fast and quite powerful for a little mini server and whatnot. This machine will also be a little dedicated server. The only reason I really bought it was because it was so dirt cheap. Um, I'm going to move my website uh, some, and two other Linux, uh, light Linux services over to this machine and run this as a dedicated little server down in the uh, cabinet in, uh, in the hallway. So uh, that's also where my NAS and the uh, main modem are. So uh, this will uh, reside there connected to a switch 24-7. Uh, in order to make it run 24-7 and not have any real uh, things to worry about, I've fitted an SSD to the machine and uh, I've put in 8GB of DDR3L memory. So uh, we'll take a look at the insides soon. First let's take a look on the outside. We have two USB 3.0 ports on the front. This one will uh, also take care of charging if you want to take advantage of that. This is a 3.5mm combo jack for either a speaker or a headset. Of course a power button on this side, there's nothing on this side, we have an SD card reader which does support UHS-1, which is decent. And here we have a Kensington lock. And on the back we have an HDMI port, Gigabit Ethernet, which is a Realtek chip. Uh, VGA, two more USB 3.0 ports, and a DC in jack for the charger, or charger, wall wart, power brick, whatever you want to call it. And of course some venting for the uh, CPU inside. I have to say this machine feels quite hefty. It, it is definitely, it is light, but you can definitely feel there's some good quality materials inside of there. When something is Intel branded I wouldn't expect any less. But uh, overall definitely feels like a very nice sturdy machine. This one appears to be uh, pretty much pristine. Which is very nice. Very nice indeed. So. Let's uh, open her up. It's actually fairly easy. By the way, I haven't actually screwed down the SSD that I put in because I don't really care when the SSD is flopping around a little bit. You can definitely feel that there's some uh, metal rubbing going on in there. So we should be able to just pull this off. need to undo the last screws here and we are greeted with the insides of the machine. So this is what a NUC looks like on the inside. Right now this is the two and a half inch bay of course where the SSD is installed. This is a 128 gigabyte Kingspec SSD. I got this during a sale at uh, AliExpress and it was only twenty dollars so that's pretty cool. And uh, all the other stuff is here on the inside as well. We have a Wi-Fi and Bluetooth combo card. This is wireless AC, I believe. We will not be taking advantage of it, but it's definitely nice to have if we do so in the future. And here are the uh, DDR3L RAM sticks. Uh, the NUC does complain that these are not the right density because these are two gigabit uh, modules. Not two gigabytes, mind you, two gigabit uh, chips. When you divide that by eight, that means that each of these chips is 256 uh, megabytes, or 512 megabytes, sorry, math. So, yeah. No, it was 256. Yay, math is totally working today. Anyways, so, but it actually wants to have the uh, higher density 512 uh, megabyte uh, chips, so 4 gigabit chips. So it does complain about that. It does it does seem perfectly stable though with, these, with this memory. So if the only thing I have to do is just to occasionally press the Y key on a keyboard just to make it boot again and that's really none of my concern. 
DDR3 really isn't all that cheap. I've looked it up if I wanted to do, if I wanted to put in another 8 gigabytes of RAM that is compatible fully without giving me nags. I would have to pay about 70 to about 80 euros. And that's really just not worth it. I mean, this is RAM I already had. It was in my Latitude E6320. Uh, I will cannibalize some memory from the uh, Aspire 5740 and put that in the uh, in the Latitude because I use that machine a hell of a lot more. So, you know, that's just uh, some trading between the machines. And if I ever wanted to do another video on the uh, Aspire, I will just transfer the RAM back in. It's it's pretty easy on both machines to uh, to service that. So let's. Uh, just put this thing back together. It has kindly labeled what the front is. You can definitely tell that way that this machine was made by Americans. Um, <laughs> joking aside, that's just uh, that's just bad. I apologize to American viewers. I know that the majority of the people who actually watch my video are from the United States, so I really shouldn't be attempting to bash my most loyal audience. All that aside. We're just uh, tightening all these screws back down again. I've already put an operating system on this because I am an absolute VMware buff. I've uh, once again installed VMware ESXi. Uh, something to note about these little machines in particular. Uh, these have the Realtek 8168 uh, network chip, which is not natively supported by any version of ESXi ever made. So you will need to slipstream the driver. Uh, that's what I did. I uh, fixed this machine up at work, so I had some time uh, to spare today, so I figured I would just set up the NUC for myself uh, and pre-configure it. And then I ran into the issue that the uh, LAN uh, chip was not supported, so... So then I found the uh, correct driver for it, slipstreamed into the ISO, booted from the ISO, installed ESXi, and uh, that worked perfectly. It is now running ESXi 6.5 update 2. I know ESXi 6.7 is out, I actually learned that today. Uh, <laughs> I haven't been uh, paying attention much about all that good stuff. I have been rather busy, I will say that much. But uh, yeah, you could probably uh, you could probably tell by the lack of content I've been putting out lately. I apologize about that, but there's also an answer to it. And uh, that's in the way of my website, I will link that in the description. I now have a website where I will uh, occasionally post some articles and some thoughts about the various products that I'm working on. Uh, again, visit it uh, in the link in the description. and uh, You can also uh, comment on the articles right there and have some uh, other means of discussion otherwise than just being on YouTube. Right, so let's hook it up now and uh, take a look at how the uh, NUC uh, works. Alright, the NUC is now powered on. This is the next screen I was talking about. It's saying unsupported 1 gigabit or 2 gigabit density sodiums detected in both sodium slots. System instability or data loss possible. Please replace sodiums with 4 gigabit or higher density. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to ignore that. Because this memory is working absolutely fine. And uh, it's booting straight into the hypervisor. I pressed F2 to actually get into the uh, BIOS first, but these machines have a rather uh, nice looking UEFI, but. Uh, I suppose this thing has other plans. At least we can now see what it's uh, what it's like booting this uh, operating system. It's usually best practice to install ESXi or any bare metal hypervisor for that matter that's not uh, Hyper-V or uh, Xen server. Uh, to install it on a USB flash drive and run it from that instead of running it from a hard drive or a SSD. But uh, for this round, I've installed it on the SSD because I, there is no space for an internal USB drive and I really don't want to waste all of my thumb drives on ESXi. <laughs> so, yeah. But uh, it's definitely picking up all the information correctly. Intel Corporation NUC 6 CAYH and a Celeron CPU J3455. This is a 1.5 GHz quad core uh, Atom processor with a turbo up to 2.1 and it supports the DDR3 1600 memory, which is in it. DDR3L, that is. So we basically maxed the RAM, put in a nice SSD, and uh, all that good stuff. And, uh, yeah. It'll now be promoted to a hypervisor. So that's pretty neat. And now it's almost finished booting. 
that means I can finally start setting up the IP address because of course I was work on, working on it at work and I can't exactly fix it up there because that's a very different network, very different subnet, all that good stuff. So I will just do that right now. There we go. We've got full network capabilities here, so that's very nice. This one will take the IP address of what used to be my microserver G8 ILO IP, because now that one is free. A lot of the others are reserved as of right now. DNS is set to 1111, which is correct. I don't have an internal DNS. So I just use internet DNSs these days. All right. So now I've got a static IP, and it should be resolvable from my PC. So I'm just going to switch to my PC real quick, and then we'll uh, wrap up the video from there. All right, so there we are. We've now logged into the web interface of ESXi 6.5 Update 2. As you can see, we are still on the NUC here, made by the Intel Corporation with our quad-core Celeron CPU, 8 gigabytes of RAM, of which a little bit is dedicated to the onboard graphics. We still have plenty of RAM free for two or three Linux machines that will run absolutely fine. The CPU should be able to handle it no problem either. And uh, we should have plenty of storage for that. They're reasonably light machines. One is just a web server. Just your basic uh, lamp type of deal with WordPress on top, uh, secured all the way through. That thing only takes up about maybe 10 gigs. The other is uh, takes up about 3 gigabytes. And then I've got another one that's also about 7 or 8. But, uh, so that should be more than plenty. And they don't take too much RAM up either. So as you can see right now, the way this thing is configured, there's absolutely nothing on here. I haven't even uh, activated it yet with the licenses that I have for ESXi. So I'll have to take care of that. We only have one data store, which contains both the operating system and all of the uh, virtual machines. This is also really not a uh, recommended practice, but uh, for this it is absolutely fine. And it's nice and zippy because of the SSD too. The machines should uh, have very decent performance in that regard as well. So yeah, it is working properly. I've set it up the way I wanted to. So the only thing that I still have to do is copy over the virtual machines. But uh, I can do that directly from the uh, other server. The only thing I need to do is uh, get them to see each other and then copy the data over. and. Uh, that should be hunky-dory. So that basically concludes the video on the NUC that I bought for a couple of Linux virtual machines for dedicated tasks. Hope you enjoyed this video. I thank you all for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video.